I'm going to pick up in Terabella, where we lived in that awesome place we we bought to take care of six folks. We got a phone call from the lady that taught us Bible studies for two years, that owned the travel lodge. She didn't own it, but her friend read it. But the same lady, we got a call, and uh, some cousins of hers had what they called a ministry in Oklahoma. Well, they need some help back there. And at the time, we had a lot of changes going on with the care business. And we had done this seven days a week for five years. Mm. We went nowhere. We took no breaks. We had the most infirm folks in California, uh, folks who they couldn't find homes for. And so when they knocked on our door, we couldn't help but say, we'll take them. We'll help these people. That's why we did it in the first place. It's to help people that couldn't help themselves. So we did this for five years straight, seven days a week. This lady right here, unbelievable, unbelievable what she, what she poured out of herself. She would wake up on Christmas mornings and she would, before she even had coffee, she would have to go in and, and physically change these folks who wore adult pampers. We had to bathe them. Uh, we had males and females. I would, I would bathe the males and she would bathe the little girls. And we'd have to get them dressed and fed before we did anything, before she even had coffee. It was amazing. But like I said before, we got more out of this work than we gave. These, these little people were precious. But it had come to the point where we had done this a long time and we didn't realize how, what it took out of us. Right, and then getting pregnant that, with uh, Israel. Yes, she, she had pregnant gotten pregnant. We had time. two sons and mm -hmm. she got pregnant for the third time plus six folks. And if you understood what all that entailed, the, the um, you know, doctor's appointments, everything that's involved in this kind of work is stressful, major stressful, takes a ton out of you. And so we got an offer to go help these folks work on their little acreage. They had some acreage in Oklahoma and then they had some acreage in um, Texas, in Odessa, Texas. And so we were offered to come and help them. And so, you know, we were baby Christians then. We like to call it baby Christians. All we wanted to do is work for God and, and please Him. And so we didn't have a brain. We, we had more compassion than we had brains. Mm. And we were just excited about the excitement. You know, what's He going to do next in our life? And so we... We, would, we wouldn't just run away, but we would pray and we'd think it over and all this kind of stuff. So Diane commuted over the phone with this lady, and her name was Maxine. And so we agreed we would come back. And I, was that by train? It, no, we took, we took our car in a moving truck, but it was absolutely mm -hmm. crazy because when you think about it, the fact that here we had finally, we were making amazing money. We had some stability, even though we didn't know how to handle our finances, but we were so uh, excited and exhausted and all these things. And they said, um, we really need help. They had a big property in Oklahoma that they were hoping to turn into a place to help people. They had a second property in Odessa, Texas. It was a motel in the slums. And they said, we want to help homeless people get off the streets and bring them up to Oklahoma. And we're going to have a place they owned a school there. It was actually the grounds. And their hope was to help them get well and have a better life and get clean. And we were so excited because you you were sober. Everything's good. We're, we're growing. Uh, and we thought, oh, my gosh, what an amazing opportunity, a change. And so that's. And so I was shocked when we got there. Oh, my God. I'm looking around this place and I'm thinking, hmm, okay. Empty school. Empty school, no people, just this old man and this old lady and us. 
<laughs> and our kids, our two, two boys. Two of our three and me pregnant. And our two boys and, and her pregnant. And I can remember sitting in their living room. And they said, well, this is how it's going to be. Uh, we need help in this area, that area. We always meet down in our little cafeteria and have lunch every day. And I'm looking around like, oh, my God, what have we, what have we done type of thing. <laughs> and so they said, you're going to live in this mobile home over there on the hill. We were getting our first experience with Christian. Religious people. Religious <laughs> people. And so... You know, I'm not playing with the full deck anyway, but, you know, since Vietnam, <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out how in the hell they end up here. And so they said, yeah, you get to live in that mobile home over there, and uh, but none of it works. Uh, <laughs> just, excuse me? They had mm -hmm. just, I don't know if you remember, but they had just had it delivered. It got delivered. They said, like, they said a new mobile home was coming to the property. We spent our first two nights in their house, and mm -hmm. somebody pulled up this... Lime green, single wide, mobile home. I'll never forget the wallpaper in the one bedroom that we were going to share with our two sons was bright gold with bright red poppies all over it. This thing had to be from 1950. The floor was warped, I remember. <laughs> and they said it. We had, it, they set it wrong at an angle, and so when we it did the bedroom, level. Well, we had to put our bed where the head was up so we wouldn't get eggs. So we're checking this place out, and I'm going, Diana, come in here. What's what's wrong? Doesn't have any water in this place. We had no water. And I looked at her and I said, Oh my God, where have you brought us? And so, who's going to fix this? And he, the old man said, You are. And I'm going, Holy sh. Sometimes it gets thirty below. In Oklahoma, you probably challenged me on that number. It gets it gets cold. Twenty below, fifteen, ten. It's cold. <laughs> I believed when I was in the army, it went down to thirty below. It's what I remembered. <laughs> I think the record's five, but it felt like thirty. <laughs> I can remember when I was in there. Oh. Did I tell that story about the tire on the? Yes, you fifth did. Well, anyway, so now you got to. Anyway, to it's cold in Oklahoma. Okay. So anyway, there's no water. Well, you're going to fix it. So I go, oh, okay. Copper. So they gave me money to run to their local hardware store. And I bought all the, I was in landscaping, so I knew about fittings and all that kind of stuff. But I had never done much plumbing. And so I can remember Diana was inside of this frozen house. <laughs> and I guess the kids are running around playing. They and, were happy. Give them uh, a ball. They're happy. We kept telling them life was good. So I was under this thing, frozen like the ice cube in an ice tray. And I was screaming up to Diana. I need a freaking pipe wrench. Give me a pipe wrench. <laughs> Not that kind. Give me a freaking. Uh, when I was really young, uh, I had like <laughs> no patience. And so I'm under tightening crap. I have red clay from head mud all my face. <laughs> my hands are frozen solid. And I'm trying to tighten up all this stuff. Well, and the other thing was it was it was copper was the joke because you when you'd done landscaping back in the day before they had PVC, you worked with galvanized or other stuff. And um, there's a real art. Yep. Plumbers out there will know there's a real art to working with copper. You have to solder. And copper and is not easy. So, okay, Diana, <laughs> test it. <laughs> yeah, water going all over my face freezing as it hits me because it was freezing. Holes, I don't know. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Do we ever end up in that place? Yeah, we okay. We I think it's good it enough took, to move in. I guess it, it took a week and a half to <laughs> weeks. It took me forever to well, stop. All. And this old guy yeah. that we came to help, he was too old. He was worthless. He couldn't help me. <laughs> he was. They're dead. It's I think. So if they watch this, they won't. They won't know. Because <laughs> I think they died both of them. But anyway, because they were old then, they got to be dead by now. That's true. I'm almost dead. They got to be dead. So we fix this place. We move in. I'm going bonkers. Yeah. My orders were to get up on the roof to this other place full of leaks and tar the whole thing. 
So I'm up there and I'm tarring this rough and we're new Christians and I'm going, so leave everything we have. Big 20 by 40 foot swimming pool, beautiful home, rock fireplace. And I'm sitting on this roof with tar all over me from head to toe. I said, nah, nah, big guy, this isn't going to work. <laughs> no, nah, think I'll go back to California. This sucks. I'm not going to do this. Freezing trying to patch this roof. And I heard a voice say, it's okay. You're not going to be here long. No, it's true. What do you mean? You're going to be leaving here within the week. Is that right? Now I know I'm hearing things. What do you mean I'm maybe leaving here? So I go home excited because then we're in the days. I heard God. <laughs> Every time I have early. to tell Diana, <laughs> I heard God. I have good news. <laughs> we're leaving here. And she's thinking, <gasps> spiritually. You're disobeying God. He sent us here. What do you mean? You're, we're leaving here. Oh. And I said, that phone, <laughs> this is one of them, believe it or not, that phone is going to ring because he told me. And we're going to be sent somewhere. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know where, but I'm just telling you, I was coming back from a hardware store and not getting these parts for whatever. <laughs> and I said, we're going to be leaving here. And honest to God's truth, the phone rings. We're mm -hmm. sitting back in the living room of this joint. Mm -hmm. And it's the lady, Maxine, that's kind of orchestrating our lives here. She goes, Diana. And Diana's eyes are getting big. She goes, how would you like to move? We own some apartments down in Odessa, Texas. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is fix them up and let homeless people live there. And then once we get them kind of half stable, we want to move them up here to Oklahoma to this place we're at. And they can do all the work on their property. These people, well, they these need people you saved to get off the street. We're going to transfer. We're going to use them. They no. can do all this stuff. No, I think they actually we don't want to. You know, the I, hearts might have been. I right, think their anyway. thoughts were that when you're when you're getting clean, you need something to do. Right. And if they were offering them yeah. room and board, that would keep. Would, let me tell you, if somebody needed clean once, that would keep me there. Get over there and frame that roof. Okay, how much? Nothing. Room and board. Same Go do way. this. Go do that. Anyway, Diana, yeah. what'd she say? She said, "Do we want to go to Odessa, Texas, in two days from now?" Yeah. And do everything I just said. And heck, yeah, get us the H out people. of here. You kept saying I get want to Get us out of here. People. I said, I'm sitting on a roof. I don't want to tar a freaking roof. I want to talk to people that need help. We didn't come here to tar a freaking roof. I know how to frame houses. I know how to plaster houses. I know how to work roofing. But I didn't come here to roof or make money. We came here to help people. And so we jumped on it. We said, yeah, let's go to Odessa, Texas. So we, two days later, we're out of there. We're driving down through a freaking snowstorm. In fact, we're following them, right? Because they know the way and they have this Horrific trailer. Storm. I'm telling you, I couldn't see two feet in front of me. And it was, I was so mad because I had my two brand new babies in the car with me and Diana was pregnant. We were in a tiny Audi. Yes. With, with we had everything we owned was either in the car. I have a picture. I'll see if I can pull it to put on the end of the series. But I have a picture of our two sons in the back, one sitting on a microwave and one, one somewhere else. But we literally, uh, they had a little trailer that was about four by four feet. And everything we owned was in there. And we were headed, we were so excited. We were going to the slums and we were gonna help people. And we didn't care where we stayed, what we got paid. We were so excited. We thought we were felt like missionaries. So here we are following them through a 15, it took us 15 hours to go from where we were at in Oklahoma to get into Odette. We were going 20 and 30 miles an hour because it's the we were in the book of Acts. we had studied for two years 
we were looking to get beat up. <laughs> so we, yeah. we we get there and these people have a nice room and they're all set up. This grandma oh. and grandpa because they had to. We didn't know how to get there, so, he, so we had to follow them. And they had a trailer to hold some of our stuff. So they were going to be leaving and going back. The they were next, delivering next us day. there to run the place. Yeah, to Oklahoma. They had to tell us where certain things were, turn on the water, all that kind of stuff. So they told Diana, well, where you're going to be staying tonight, you and the kids, is over there in room 12 or whatever the age it was. Oh, so we we couldn't, we didn't care what it was. We were exhausted from that long trip. And the babies were crying. They need to sleep. And so we get over in this room, look around. We're talking. Uh, I had been kind of used to that because I was been homeless before I'd been in the war. But my wife brought up all proper, proper, gutted, educated. <laughs> gutted motel room. <laughs> Literally like you see on the movies, the hanging single bulb in the bathroom. Homeless people had stayed there and there was a peed on mattress thrown in the living room that had roaches from people that had been smoking dope left on it. I guess they weren't that desperate. They left some. And filthy, filthy, filthy. And here it was like, 11.30 at night, and they pointed us to this room when the owners themselves had an apartment that had several bedrooms, and they pointed us here. And so, we, so Diana goes back to them and says, listen, it's probably 20 below. How are we supposed to keep warm in this room you sent us to? And they said, well, you, you stay warm by using the stove. You turn on the Gas burners. Gas yourself. Turn on the burner and I said, gas yourself. What? Yeah, yeah, that's how you keep warm. I said, I have two two babies with me. Well, if you want to well, keep warm, you turn on these these uh I will never burners. I will right. never forget we had we had our little puppy dog Goliath and what I did, I had from a coat my mother had bought me that was a big old wool, what they call the maxi coat. Like it was so big, it was all the way to the ground. And I put that maxi coat, because it was this thick, over the mattress. And we slept on that mattress that night with Isaiah and Isaac and our dog. Did I smoke the joint? That was No, oh. you, were, you weren't doing that I anymore. I should have. Probably would have kept me I'll warm. tell you what, it could have been tempting because yeah. it was so filthy. Yeah. And it was our introduction to, uh, well, anyway, I'll be kind. So we <laughs> get there, and we're going to go get the, or the directions eh, from the owner. What do you guys expect of us, that kind of thing? It was the next day they were going to leave. What are we supposed to do here? Well, blah, 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 you know, you might meet people, and then you bring them here and let them stay here. And we said, yeah, well, how are, we, how are they supposed to keep warm? With the burners? And the old dude says, yeah. That's how you, I said, are you out of your flipping mind? Drug addicts with burners. Yeah. What we if the place catches coming. on fire, oh they die, God. you're freaking liable. Oh, my goodness. And then we're liable. So he said, he said, I know God. I've known him for 40 years longer than you. And I know about business. And I know how to make, oh, you know how to make this prosper? Yeah. And if you guys don't like it, you you're going to have to figure it out. You can leave. Are oh, you freaking old frog? He gets in the car and they leave. And Diana said one word to him, asked him one question, and no, they we went were, off. It was the next day. Yeah. And we were, what was so interesting about this is our Audi had a flat tire. We had unloaded everything. I had tried in the unloading, I tried to set up our little house in the apartment to make it doable. <laughs> and they called us in the next day, and my husband, had one question for them as they were telling us what was going on and sharing their vision of how this was all going to work. And he said he made the mistake of questioning. Remember, don't ever question. <laughs> don't ever question the religious heads. He said, is that honest? Because they told us to Are lie. Are you being to honest? Bed, Are you telling the truth? And we were going to run in heaters and then remove them. And then and, and these people that we're half out of their minds. We were supposed to attract and help. We're going to literally 
be risking their lives to stay warm in, in the Oklahoma winters. And all he said is this man was doing all this manipulating. He said, is that honest? And oh my God, they took off with their credentials and how many churches they started, this, that, and the other. And Dennis just got up and walked out. I stayed and I just cried. I looked at him and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And we didn't have any money. So we, we had, had no nothing money, to change the tire. tire. We had nothing. And I looked at Absolutely China. Absolutely nothing. So this uh, serving God, this is where it gets you, huh? And I'm cussing. I'm mad because I'm brand new Chris. Ah, blah, 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 cussing. Blah, blah. What do we do now? Type. I have two babies. What have you done to me? Of course, I'm going to blame her, right? Not God. So, well, let me call Mama. Mama Lori. The one that... Uh, up in Kansas. Yes. She's up in Kansas. So Diana tells her the whole story and asks her, what should we do? What should we do? And Lloyd says, well, I'll tell you what. Don't compromise. If you're not, if you're not adverse to washing dishes, I was held. Oh, my goodness. I was held. 37 or something. Yes. You were, you were old uh, enough and it had enough taste of being your own boss and making good money that it was not appealing. Even though we made the jobs for you because you didn't work for other people. It, it was we were not, making like six grand a month in the care business. And she asked me to come and wash dishes. And then, and Diana can work in the inn, right? Mm -hmm. she, Diana can work at the desk in the motel. And we both go, we got to feed our kids. We got to do something. Mm -hmm. And so I remember asking that old man, dude, here's the deal. Blah, blah, blah. Do you have a tire around here anywhere? <laughs> I think he went Jeez. to the junkyard, honestly. And he did, went and got me a tire. And we put that sucker on. And we couldn't get out of that place fast enough. So we, t Greg, Greg, my friend Greg, he'll be watching this series. Thank God for Greg. We gave him a call and he came and met us in absolute snowstorm and helped us get back from there <laughs> back to this motel. And and this is sad because it was Greg's aunt and uncle, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 So we don't mean to talk about bad or about them, Greg, but you know them better than we do. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I speak the truth, so, you know, I'm sorry I went on air, but you get it. Anyway, um, he took us back there in that horrible storm. And Lori worked at this beautiful restaurant. She had decorated in all Spanish, and it was just Motel like restaurant. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And so it was like coming to heaven after being in Odessa, Texas, in oh. the slums. So we got back there, and our kids, we got a, she gave us a little motel room oh. um, without charge. And Diana made the best of it. She took a nice chest for a refrigerator and had it up on this closet uh, thing up there. And I would go to work. I was painting rooms. Was that time I was painting rooms? Yeah, that was. No, this trip. this was the washing dishes time. This was the washing dishes. Okay, I would go wash dishes. I'm in the wash a lot of dishes. If you've ever washed dishes in a big restaurant, it's butt kicking in a lot of dishes. I thought I was back on KP. You were so in the army. mad. You were oh, so mad. mad. Say. And this guy, he may be watching this too. I forget his name, but he was the boss. He, he owned the joint. And he would come around. And I mean, this was major humbling in my life. He would come around and nitpick about what I was doing with these dishes. I wasn't going fast enough. I wasn't stacking them good enough. I wasn't this and that. And Okay, dude. So I'm watching. And I hear this voice said, keep washing, keep washing, don't say a word to that person. He said, I'm gonna make you the head of this whole restaurant. <laughs> what? Wash your freaking dishes. What do you mean the head of the restaurant? Just shut up and wash the dishes. Okay, okay. Washing dishes, I don't know how long, a few weeks or whatever. And um, I got so fast. This guy was so mouthy. I said, several race. You get the trick <laughs> over. I'll show you and watch this. So I wiped him out. Hands down. And so anyway, the boss came to me, the second boss. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Greg, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I think it was Greg. Mm-hmm. And Greg said, I'm going to train you to be a cook. And Greg was a really good cook. Mm-hmm. And I said, I've never breakfast cooked. I, I cooked before, but never breakfast. I'd done lunch or whatever. No, no, I'm going to show you, man, that guy was good. He'd go, man, he'd have six A's flipping it, and I'd try it and splat. <laughs> Every time, Greg, this sucks. Uh, Greg was also my friend. He wasn't just, just my boss, so I could talk to him the way I wanted to. This whole freaking place sucks, Greg. I think I'll go back to California. No, no, dude, I need you, man. I don't, I don't have anybody here. You could, you'll get it. Just let me hang in there. And so Diana was running, uh, uh, and then you became waitress, right? That was in on the a sil- trip. In that end. What? That was on a return trip. Oh, return trip. Anyway, she's still working at the desk, I guess. We ended up back and forth three times over five years, back to the same To area. Kansas, to back, back California, and forth, back and forth. And back and forth. A lot of people that read our story say, damn, I've never known anybody moves as many times as you guys. It you was, must have moved 15 times in your life. 12 or 15 and about a, I'll go back and count it, but it was about <laughs> 16, 16. Little babies moving all over the country. They don't know what's going on. They're just having a blast. <laughs> mm-hmm. This this particular place, it was called Salina Inn, had mm-hmm. this huge playground for little kids. I mean, slides, the kids swings, loved it. swimming kids pools. Kids loved it. it. It was just really awesome for them, a, you know, it, it was all it was all good because God covers little kids. They don't I don't know. Think, I, th- I think the but, point of sharing all that, it really, um, we were just so grateful, as Dennis shared at the end of the last episode, we, we were so grateful for the changes that had happened in our life that when we sold out and said, um, we want to give you everything, we just threw ourselves with abandonment into any open door and any opportunity where we thought we could actually help someone, which is kind of what we're trying to do still with this series, is we wanted to help people and encourage people even back then. And even though we were far from where we're at now in healing and different things, uh, you know, the humbling that you went through and, and our <laughs> naivety that now we look and we see those things coming like, uh, if it's too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. But it was, uh, you said it rightly, it was a book of Acts thing that we were living and we had, uh, what a training ground. And so there I was pregnant as a roller skate and the setup was in the restaurant in the hotel where we were working what happened is the owner kept kind of fighting with Mama Lori, who had hired you. And it was back and forth and back and forth. And finally, my mother called and said, hey, we miss those grandbabies. Have you ever thought of coming back? And the day she called, she didn't know this. You had come home. We had moved out into a little house that had been offered to us. The man in the little house said, we've sold the house. It's no longer up for rent. And then to add to it, Dennis had been told one too many times to do three different things at once by the three different managers or whatever. And so he was like, he came home and he said, I can't do this. I can't do this. And literally my mom had called before he walked in the door and told me that and said, if you kids want to come home, we'll help you get home and we'll help you get in an apartment. God bless parents. Holy moly. But you know, when, when things hit, they hit. In that situation, when I, when I was cooking, I had asked the manager to get me some help. It's a huge inn. Right. Sometimes down there would do banquets with hundreds of that people. That was the straw. And uh, I kept saying, I'm, I'm telling you, I need. if you don't give me help, I'm out because mm. I can't deal with this mentally. And they kept promising. Or physically. Mm-hmm. And they kept saying, I'm... Don't worry, we're, we're interviewing, we're going to get some. And I looked one day and I said, bye. And they said, you can't do that. And I said, bye. I talked to you people, I warned you three times. Can't put you, out slow. You did nothing. Yeah. And I'm not going to I'm not gonna be responsible for the crap you're having me serve these people. So I'm gone. So I just quit and walked out and went back to the house. And I can remember before your mother called, like I say, when stuff hits, it hits. These little guys drop toys down the toilet. 
and there was snow that deep that day, and I'm out in the freaking yard with this toilet I had to pull off, freezing to death again, trying to find, why, why didn't this thing work? So I'm looking down in there, and there it is, a freaking, where's that little frog it's a little, at? It was a little corner. Oh, little thing <laughs> like, stuck in there, and I said, oh my God, we didn't have a toilet. So I get the toilet done, I'm getting it all fixed, and she said, I'm so glad you fixed it. Why? She said, we're leaving, we're moving. Yeah. Mom called and she wants to financially help us get back to California. So by all the snow, all the, oh my God, it was another pretty big trial there. It was a huge trial, uh, but we, but I And not, she was pregnant, remember how many months you were? I, w I was getting close to giving birth. I was within a couple months and I was very big. And so we, we took off. In our little Audi. That's a whole nother story. And they had the worst storms. And long story short, it it was miraculous that we that we got home. We got snowed in in Santa Rosa, California. They called it a national disaster. And my no, mom. No, you, for you passed up the the uh, <laughs> uh, where we stayed first in the motel room. I know. And it was like it was like this Corona lockdown crap. Oh yeah. We were stuck in this room. We had no money. And we were waiting for the weather Dalhart, to lift. Texas. And we had a radiator go out in this old beat up Audi we had. So we drove it down the street and it conked out. And we, I remember pulling into this donut shop. And uh, we looked at these people and said, is there a, a mechanic anywhere near here? Oh, man, you pull in the right place. He's right across the street. So we went, oh, good. So we, we pull over there and this big old Texan. About 12 feet tall. His nickname was literally Tex. Tex. And he had that Texas accent. Can I help y'all? Six foot and six. we said, uh, yeah, and we told him about the radiators. Oh, no problem. Leave it here. You can leave it here. Take a taxi back to your motel room. And I'll have it done by the morning. So Diana was coming on glue because I was going crazy. Two and she had the later. kids in the motel room oh for two days. Uh, little kids, you know, we're talking little kids going nuts. And she had them for two days and we had a little dog. So we're getting up in the morning to go pick up that car and head to frick out of Dalhart, Texas. I think that was it. And a dog disappears. Mm. We're like, everything's loaded up. The kids are... Where's Goliath, the little baby said. Where, mm -hmm. Where's our dog? Mm -hmm. And I look at her, where the hell's the dog? Yeah. And I mean, it's snowing, we've been freezing. Oh, we got to get out of there. She goes, I don't know. So we sat on the porch of the house, grabbed a little guy's hands and we prayed. Oh God, send their little dog back to our little kids. This is too much. It's laughable now, but it was serious then. It was and we one prayed disaster. so hard, and that little guy, we just called and called, called his little name. He didn't come for hours. No, it was one and disaster after another. He absolutely. was probably starving. We, were, Who knows? We probably weren't feeding him dog food. Well, we figured out but, later he kind of like saved our lives because the long story short, we were going to take he off. He showed back up. We were so yeah. stir crazy from lockdown that we were going to take off in the middle of a storm that we shouldn't have taken off in. And once the car was totally fixed, we did take off and we went from Dalhart to Santa Rosa and literally the road we went on. Wait a minute, you, you're messing up the whole thing here. <laughs> oh, I am? Yeah, oh, you, okay. you'll agree when I go back there, get it back up. So we get in that car and we're heading, I mean, a taxi or whatever with the kids and we're going down to pick up that, that Audi car. Well, we get there and it isn't ready. And they say somebody else is coming in, you know, fix it or whatever. So this other guy ends up supposedly fixing it. So we go to start and the thing won't start. I mean, won't start. And this is a mechanic stand. I said, what? what? What's wrong with them? Twilight thing? zone. <laughs> oh, well, you, you know, you need a new radiator or whatever. And oh, shh. So I said, Diana, grab them kids. We'll go in the hamburger joint right there. These guys are hungry. We're going to the hamburger joint. So we go to the hamburger joint and we're sitting there mm -hmm. and we're talking out loud and the waitress hears us. Mm -hmm. And she walks over, it's a true story. She walks over and she says, hey, dude, guess what? Was it her husband? Or, mm -hmm. Her husband. My husband's a mechanic. Let Has me, a tow truck. Let me call him. She calls him and he goes, she goes, not only is he a mechanic, but he'll 
this thing up for you and tow it to our house and he'll fix it for you. He'll be done in two hours. You just stay here and enjoy your lunch. We had lunch. Don't worry about a thing. And he'll only charge you. $25. What was it? $25, $25 for the whole thing. <laughs> he told it there, fixed it, and brought it back just because they were great Midwestern people. And she was an awesome, you know, young waitress. And so it all gets done, but we hear our biggest storm in the freaking United States is getting ready to hit. So we tried, to, out Rosa. We tried to outrun it. We tried if I to had a it. If I had a tattoo gun right now, I'd tattoo stupid <laughs> and idiot. Here. I want to I so, leave everybody with the picture of me out the sunroof. The Audi had a sunroof. You don't want to tell the story? We were making, we were making oh. the trip and we couldn't get out of there. Twilight Zone. Finally, the car is running. It's late afternoon. We head for Santa Rosa. We're going to make it. We have gas money. And it is so bad. Semis are coming by, throwing so much snow. People are off the roads, freezing to death. Windshield wipers didn't work. Didn't windshield have windshield wipers stopped. So yeah. I went aerial and was being the windshield wipers the whole way to Santa Rosa. <laughs> Out of the sunroof. She's, she's like eight months pregnant. She's on top of this thing. It's like thirty below, and the car no starts going. And I'm going, what the? We got icicles. We got surrounded the, the wheel. Say. Yeah, we got to the exit and we got one of the last rooms at the Holiday Inn in Santa Rosa. And my mother said, for God's sake, stay there. I will Western Union you money. Do not risk my grandchildren. But real quick, we didn't have a jack to change the tire. Icicles that big blew out our tire and we went into the station with a flash. And I yelled out because I was like, anybody from Fresno, California? There was, there was cars everywhere broken down because they brought out the National Guard. This was really bad. And one guy yelled out, yeah, hey, dude, I got, I got a uh, jack or whatever. So thank God he came over, changed our tire, and we rolled it, what, 10 miles more? Yeah. Ten miles more to and a holiday to that, inn. Holiday inn. We were happy campers. Oh man, so life hasn't been dull. <laughs> okay.